I've been working hard to get this Volkswagen Golf Cabriolet to a point where I could call it mechanically sound. And I think I'm fairly close to the mark at this point. But the problem is, it looks terrible. So we need to get onto the bodywork. Superficially, after spending a bit of time kind of washing it and getting, uh, getting some of the heavy grime off it, it doesn't look too bad in certain areas. And I had contemplated maybe just painting the likes of the driver's side wing and door, which is why I've actually started some of the preparation work on that, which I'll show you now in a minute. But when you start getting in close, you can start to see some of the, uh, some of the problem areas, um, such as uh, dents and dings, little specks of rust and stone chips and stuff like that that have gone a little bit too far. And basically, it's all kind of letting the side down. And uh, I'm thinking that I need to paint the whole car. Now, herein lies my dilemma. I am not going to be able to turn a profit on this car if it's a case where I have to get it resprayed, okay? And there is a little clue. I'm planning on selling this car and that's why I bought it, okay? So what we need to do is we need to attack it from a different angle. And I'm going to go down the route of actually roller painting it with Rust-Oleum. It's a well-documented process and I'm going to give it a go myself. I've never done it before, so wish me luck. Okay, so realistically the first thing we need to do is to start taking the trim off and um, I'm thinking I'm going to take the front bumper off as well just because uh, painting around the grill and getting around the lights and everything like that, I'll just be able to do an easier job with it. I don't want this car to look crap after I'm finished. The intention is to take my time on it and actually to get it looking right. Now you'll see here I have actually started rubbing back here and um, there were some bogey looking repairs done in the past. Now the great thing about the Rust-Oleum combi colour that I'm going to be using is it's going to hide all that. And... Uh, but you have to do the surface prep. You have to get it smooth. It's not gonna. It's not gonna hide um, imperfections in the uh, in the, the contours of the car or any of that kind of carry on. He says as if he knows what he's talking about. I'm figuring this out as I go, folks. Okay, so you have to stay with me on it. All right. So let's uh, let's start by unbuttoning some of the trim and working our way right the way around the car, front to back, and basically taking off anything that's easy to take off and masking up anything that's not. If we have to buy a few new trim clips for this, I don't really mind too much. I'd rather uh, get the trim off than uh, try and leave it in place just to save the clips. They're not exactly expensive, you know. Obviously, I prefer not to break them, but you can see that's going well. When you're stuck getting a quarter turn at a time on a bolt, it's always going to be about two feet long. It's never going to be a little short, stubby little bolt. Come on, there we go. I've been busy folks, things are coming along nicely here now and uh, I have a lot of the trim, I have pretty much all the trim off this side of the car and the back and um, yeah, it's pretty much ready to start kind of rubbing down and getting ready for paint. A few little bits and pieces to sort out still. Uh, windscreen surrounds, I need to figure out how to get them out without breaking the windscreen because that would really ruin my day. So obviously I'm not taking all the trim off, so the inside of the bonnet won't be painted or anything like that. I'm also not telling you what colour I'm going to paint it. So um, yeah, it's not going to be silver because you can't paint metallic colours the colour I'm going with. I uh, have been toying with a few ideas and I think I've settled on one. And fortunately my local hardware store has come good and is ordering the paint in for me. So uh, that should be arriving over the next few days. Okay, so that's pretty much all the trim removed now, aside from the front bumper. And I'm, when I take the front bumper off, I'm going to take the headlights out as well, just for convenience. It'll, it'll be an easy job to do when the bumper's off. But uh, you'll see I've taken the number plate and the, um, the, the rub strip, such as it is, off the front bumper as well, while it's still on the car. I just reckon it would be a little bit easier, to be honest with you. So that's it done anyway in that regard. So now, once I get that off, we can start... Uh, rubbing down the car and we need to have a look at that dent that's at the uh, the rear left quarter and see if we can do something about that or rather see what we can do about it we'll have to do something with it okay so the last bit of prep work we need to do before uh, masking everything up and rubbing down the paintwork is to get that front bumper off so let's get stuck into that
This is proving to be an enormous pain in the arse. I have to have all of the bolts off at this stage. I've clipped some bolts underneath at the top, down the wheel arch liners. Oh, there's something holding it. I don't know whether it's just stuck on the, it's like sliders that, they, that it runs onto. Oh, come on, you bastard. missing something there's obviously something I, i'm not doing that needs to be done maybe it looks like a little clip in here that you're supposed to push in or something like that maybe it's that if you find yourself doing this there's a uh, fastener down the bottom two little poppers there and then this lad here it kind of goes on the inside of the wheel arch liner and has a hidden bolt going through there it's a t25 torx and uh, that uh, that holds it on. So oh, there's still something holding it. Ah, this is driving me mental. Just a ten mil, but a ten mil nut that I removed on the other side from the bracket, and I'm actually going to take it off on this side. I don't think you're meant to take it off. But ow. I don't think I'm meant to take it off, but it seems to have worked on that side. So, all right. So now, if it doesn't come off now, I'm gonna cry. Ah, yes. Oh, thank God for that. That was such a pain in the face. It'd be easy if you knew where all the fasteners were, but. Right, okay. All right, given the fact that it's only four bolts, I'm going to just take out the headlights as well now. Um, with the bumper off, they're very easy to remove. Well, they would have been if the electrical connectors hadn't put up a fight. And to tell you the truth, I nearly gave up on them. But I decided to persevere and I got the connectors off. So at least it keeps the headlights out of harm's way. And they are nice headlights in this car, so I would like to keep them that way. All right, so there's one headlamp unit out, and we'll do the other one now as well. Then we can start masking up the rest of the stuff that we're not removing. All right. Might seem like a strange thing to be doing at this juncture, but the last thing I want is a whole clump of dirt or something like that from a part of this, this kind of part of the car to fall off and go into the paint when I'm painting it. So why not just give it a clean? Anyway, <laughs> well, the bumper's off. Just makes good sense, doesn't it? Now, in actual fact, it's a very solid car, this. There's no rust anywhere, really, on it. Like, it's, aside from a little bit of kind of superficial surface rust here and there, but we can allow it that. I mean, for a for a 23-year-old car, it's doing very well, I have to say, now. Okay, so at this juncture, what I want to do is have a look at that dent that's on the rear quarter and see if we can do anything with that. Because um, there's no point in kind of getting stuck in until we sort of, like rubbing the car down until we have something done with that. At least maybe try and get the dent pulled out a little bit. But we're, we're going to see how we go. So what I'm going to do here is, at the sharpest point of the dent, which is here, I'm going to drill a hole and I'm going to put a screw in it. And I'm going to get onto the, get onto the screw and I'm going to try and pull it out. So, and we'll, we'll weld up the screw hole then afterwards. All right, so now let's get a screw. Let's see how we go with this anyway. <laughs> Look at that. You couldn't have asked for better. Brilliant. So now, obviously, there's a couple of crease lines and stuff like that there. But the whole thing is just... Ah, that's brilliant. I'm delighted with that now. We're going to have to use a little bit of filler just to dicky it up a bit. But that's really good. I'm actually surprised at how, how easily it came out. So uh, when that's all rubbed down, we'll, we'll get a better idea then as to what sort of, what sort of uh, damage we're looking at. 
Okay, so I want to just start uh, sanding this area down and just see how we uh, how we go. Because obviously, you know, although the dent is gone, there's still a few ripples and marks and stuff like that. And then we have these areas here where I'm not entirely sure what happens. It looks like it got sp uh, splashed with something like a, I don't know, a paint stripper or something. But anyway, whatever it was, uh, it needs to be sanded back. So we will get the uh, get the DA sander on that with some uh, fairly coarse paper on it. I'm going with a 120 grit at this point. So we'll uh, we'll see how we look, and then we'll step up to maybe a 400. Then by the time we're actually kind of prepping for paint, having the correct tools for the job definitely makes this a lot easier. Uh, I picked up this uh, uh, DA sander, an electric DA sander in B and Q, I think it was uh, for yeah, it was B and Q for 40 euro. So it was cheap, you know. I mean, and then I had a shop vac connected to it as well because it comes with the adapter, which is brilliant. So it means it sucks all the dust away. Nevertheless, I'll be wearing the dust mask as well. So let's just uh, let's just see how we go. Just uh, starting out. I'm not going to get it all done now, but uh, it's just to kind of get an idea. Okay, so just looking here now, we have a, a bit of a dip there and one either side of where the hole was drilled and then a bit of raised metal where the hole was. So I think that'll come good though with a skim of filler. Um, and then what we can do is just try and level everything else off then. There's also a bit of a dip, a dip here as well. So a bit of a skim of filler along there, blend it all in and um, I think that'll look all right. It's a... Uh, I'm not going to have to use half a pound of filler like I would have done if I if I hadn't pulled that dent out. So, you know, I mean, look, a little bit is all right, you know, just to kind of dress everything up. But the dent is gone, you know. Um, so, yeah, uh, now, I'm gonna, as I said, the filler is going to be done at a later stage. I'm not going to do that right now. What I'm going to do is I want to sand, that, sand back the rest of the car. And then in these areas here, they're pretty good. But again, the slightest little skim of filler there again just to kind of bring that back to um the surface or what i could do is maybe uh, i might look at just um getting that back to bare metal or at least down to primer and see how we uh, see how we're looking then so we could try with a slightly coarser uh pad so maybe an 80 grit so we'll um we'll uh, we'll try that actually and see how we go bit of filler in there as well actually so somebody's obviously been at this before so yeah and obviously this is a failed repair attempt now I can see, feel a ridge there so I, I need to get that right back but um yeah and like all those little speckles and everything like that are now gone so so that's a positive so we can um I mean it actually feels very smooth there so I'm not feeling any undulations I like that word. Uh, yeah, so we will um, we'll be able to fill there and there and there. Dicky that up a little bit more. Um, that the, the trim panel is going to be going on the side there. And yeah, I think we'll get away with that. Okay, folks, it is actually a couple of weeks later and I've now got the car all uh, rubbed down. Uh, by and large, anyway. But uh, you can see now I still have to wipe it down uh, and basically get in some of the little nooks and crannies and stuff like that, like in around there. I need to just uh, have a go with some uh, sandpaper and then a little bit of cleaning in there as well. Give it all a wipe with a, um, a uh, thinner soaked rag. And then what we can do is we can start looking at getting some of the areas filled that need to be filled. Now, it's actually really not that bad, to be honest with you. The worst of the areas are actually, as I said, down here. Um, and even that's, uh, that's a hell of a lot better than it used to be. And down around here, 
tiniest little bit of filler is needed there. I, I kind of, when I was standing back, there was already filler there. Obviously, there was a, a divot or a dent or something like that there that uh, somebody has addressed in the past. You know, you think that they'd have been able to get into the back and actually just pop the dent out or something to some degree. Maybe they did. Who knows? Anyway, look, it's it's grand. Uh, we'll we'll be able to dicky that up as well. The uh, the bonnet is all rubbed down. Now you'll see I used some high build primer in certain areas just to kind of uh, level things off a bit. And uh, same on the wing here, just to kind of take any surface imperfections out of it. Um, it's looking really good there now. And. Uh, if you follow this down here, you can see slightest little dent there. Let me give that a little lick of filler as well. Uh, and then, yeah, basically then after we've got all that done, then it's just a case of masking it all up and giving it its first coat of paint. All right, eyes upon, everybody's favourite. So, uh, yeah, the old uh, rule with it is a golf ball of uh, filler to a pea of hardener. So uh, let's... Uh, Let's do that. Obviously, we're not going to use all of that here, but we, we'll mix uh, we'll mix it up and we'll uh, we'll have a look at the other side as well and get a bit on there. Even plays a little song for us. Isn't that nice? God, I love the smell of eyes upon in the morning. All right. So now that's as much as we're going. going to go with a nice little bit of hardener there well you don't got too much because the stuff will harden before you even get the chance to put it on the car so mix that all up until all the stripes are gone I don't want you to think that I know what I'm talking about too much but I have used filler before and I've done little bits and pieces and you know, by no means a bodywork expert, as I'm sure you will see when this car is finished. But if it looks semi-passable, well, then I'm all right with that. Okay. Now let's schlock a bit on there and see how we go. All right, so now that's uh, that's that side done. Let's uh, let's go over the other side of the car and get a bit on there too. Very important when you're doing stuff like this, folks, to make sure that you have your tongue at the right angle. You also have to try and expel the air. Now obviously this is going to have to be sanded back to get the shape right, but that is not bad folks, not bad at all. Okay folks, everything is now basically ready for paint, it's all masked up and I have the areas that needed to be filled, filled and sanded back and everything like that as well so it's really starting to come together now but uh, obviously there's still a lot to do but i'm going to leave it for another episode so you'll have to join me in part two where i am going to paint this car with a roller so please do hit the subscribe button before you go and make sure you click the notification bell as well and you won't miss any updates and you will see then how this car shapes up. I'm really excited and it is going to look the business if I do it right. So uh, you'll have to wait and find out. Thanks for watching. Talk to you soon.